Stephen Jolly, veteran community broadcaster, RPH Australia and Vision Australia Radio. Um, my name is Stephen Jolly. Uh, I've been involved with RPH Australia uh, since it started in uh, 1980, I think it was, and really in the RPH movement um, all that time. Um, for many years I worked in the information technology industry as a computer programmer, systems analyst, and uh, about 20 years into that my, I guess, community interest took over and I had a significant career change from um, working in the, in the public service uh, in the, in the IT world to working with um, the radio for the print handicap service. So it became, um, it moved from a community interest that was taking uh, a lot of my time, including uh, any work time I could sneak into it, um, to being my, my full focus. Um, that was from 1994. Um, I joined Vision Australia at that time, known as the Association for the Blind, where we had um, one radio station, 3RPH Melbourne. When I left that role um, in 2009, uh, we'd been able to build the network up to um, eight stations um, around Victoria and southern New South Wales. Um, and then I moved into communications work, still related to radio and other platforms from 2009 until I left Vision Australia in 2015 and um, still do a bit of volunteering for RPHA and uh, for Vision Australia Radio and other, um, other involvements with Vision Australia uh, with its library. So that's a bit of a, a summary of, of my background. Yeah, and we'll, we'll go back to um, yeah, your sure. immense contribution to RPH Australia in, um, later on in our, in our discussion, but I wanted to go right back to the, right back to the start. Um, I'm wondering if you can tell us how you made your start in community radio in the 70s. So you started as a presenter, is that right? Yes, I did. Uh, but before I was a presenter, I was one of the people preparing the way for the blindness and low vision community to take its place in community or access radio. There were a few things happening around 1974, 75. Mm -hmm. um, there were community radio stations, particularly music stations, starting up in Sydney and Melbourne. There was four triple Z in Brisbane in 1975. And around that time, uh, the ABC uh, was directed to get involved uh, and make its facilities available to the public. Prior to that time, um, broadcasting was the sole domain of uh, what were then described as the public broadcasters, like um, the government through the ABC, and commercial broadcasters. And our role as members of the community was to listen to what was being fed to us. But that all changed during the time of the Whitlam government when um, it was agreed that the airwaves should be made available uh, to the community to broadcast. So when the ABC started to establish its three double Z station uh, in 1975, it first went to air, a group of us in the blind and low vision community said, oi, we better get on board with this. Here's an opportunity to uh, raise the profile of our community through radio uh, by talking about uh, how people who are blind or have low vision live their lives, um, sort of work they do, um, other things that would be of interest, um, and at the same time start to provide information for our community. And we started with a half hour program on the ABC's three double Z in Melbourne uh, called A Blind Affair. We couldn't think of a better name at the time. <laughs> um, and that was like a magazine program 
that, that went for the two years of the life of that radio station. And that was um, a fun time. It was quite a bun fight with all the groups um, from the various um, ethnic communities, as they were described then, mm -hmm. um, the English language groups, there might be uh, consumer uh, action people, uh, there were people sp speaking out about the environment mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know protecting uh, the the animal world and and, and, and the vegetation world. Yeah. Um, uh, there was us and and others from disability communities all battling for this time on Three Double Z. Three Double Z was closed down probably because it was too hard for the government and for the ABC to handle um, in uh, mid 1977, but. Um, uh, the virus was already out uh, by then and um, there was a great interest in establishing stations. So already at that time 3CR I think was on air, I think it went to air in about 76 mm. uh, and we did have some time on that uh, and that was very successful and, and uh, again a sort of a magazine discussion type weekly program but we knew that this wasn't going far enough um, it was time to work towards having a dedicated service for our community mm. and uh, so we were very much influenced by what was going on in America where they had their um, radio reading services and what they did there was uh, use a, a, an additional channel that you could technically use on FM transmissions called the subcarrier and so there were these dedicated closed radio stations established in America where they would be reading newspapers and books magazines on air up to 24 hours a day and we thought this was terrific mm -hmm. now to listen to it you had to have a modified radio so that it could pick up the FM subcarrier but at the time and it was a bit of a lesson for us really we thought well that's as far as we'll be able to go because publishers won't want their material being read publicly uh, but in fact it was fine in time uh, for material to be read over the airwaves quite publicly um, but at the time we didn't realize that so we we uh, we shot for the fm not not the fm subcarrier for a variation of, of that approach but it was the same approach but doing it a different way and that was using frequencies off the end of the AM band that again you'd have to uh, modify the radio to be able to pick those up and with the uh, very um, good and sincere uh, committed help of Tony Staley mm -hmm. uh, I didn't realize how committed he was at the time um, he was the Minister for Communications uh, in uh, Malcolm Fraser's government and in 1978 he met a delegation of people from Victoria and New South Wales and um, gave permission for licences under the old um, Broadcasting Act, I've forgotten what it was called now, but it wasn't the Standard Broadcasting Act, it was more a Communications um, Act that was being used. Uh, for these special stations to be set up mm. and that's where they were set up um, in the early 1980s uh, and continued until the transfer and we'll talk about this later to mm -hmm. the um, FM band and um, being positioned as mainstream broadcasters so that's that's how that all sort of started um, and that's where I got experience not only in um, working with with older people, I was only you know a young buck in my twenties then. Yes. Uh, but with older leaders of the blindness and low vision community, um, in in working towards um, achieving a goal that we had, so we had to work with government, we had to work with bureaucrats, uh, we had to work with others in the blindness and low vision community, the organisations providing services. In Victoria, it was the Royal Victorian Institute for the Blind and the Association for the Blind, mm -hmm. who pretty, pretty quickly became quite supportive. So we started with a pretty Mickey Mouse sort of operation um, with our radio station operating um, out of a house in Paran that was made available to us at no charge by the Villa Maria Society for the Blind. 
um, then the Association for the Blind uh, got became quite committed and started to put resources into it and we moved on from there. In conversation with Beck Pascalini, RPH Australia. Produced for RPH Australia and the Ability Radio Project for Triple ZFM.